Hello, stick around if you want to find out how to install the Adventure Spec CRF 300L hard parts. CRF 300L, what a great little bike. We've had one for a little while now. Um, I'm going to talk you through how to install some of our hard parts. Okay, let's get going. So first of all, we're going to start with the luggage side racks. So these are really an extension of the work that we've done. I think we started it with the 450L actually, and then we developed them for the T700 and then the 250L and now the 300L. So we kind of know what we're doing with these side racks. They're quite a simple rack. They're um, a flat rack. They're not tubular. They are uh, aluminium and they've got these kind of slots cut out of them that you can use to kind of mount stuff onto. And really they're shaped and styled to fit with the bike and kind of look good without any luggage on because, you know, you sometimes get me riding without luggage on. Okay, so step one is remove the seat. Remove the side panel, that's fairly straightforward. Okay, this is where you've got to start paying attention a little bit. Um, remove the footrest. Now on the right hand side, this is a fairly easy operation. It's more complicated on the left side, but we'll come to that. So once the footrest is removed, I'm installing here the bracket. Once that's bolted on, I'm putting on here the clip that receives the, uh, the bolt. So this is the extension bracket that mounts the luggage rack to the frame. Just got to make sure it's the right way up. So it's quite important here that the uh, bolts, nuts and bolts that you put in are quite loose to start off with. It's going to really help you um, align everything if you keep those loose. Put the washer on the bolts, put the bolt through the hanger, put the spacer on the other side, and that's what you're going to use to connect it to the frame. So putting that in finger tight because we're going to have to remove it again when we put the seat back on. This is the final bolt going into the uh, first bracket that we installed. And once you're happy that everything is aligned, then you can tighten. I'm just using a spanner under there. Once that's back in place, you can install the panel. So that's the right side of the bike, which is really straightforward. Uh, it goes on in a matter of minutes, really. Um, the left hand side, be prepared for, um, well, the first time I did this, I really had to scratch my head and I'll explain why. Remove the side panel. So as you can see, the passenger footrest hanger here has been put in before the battery box. And we are going to come across a problem because the pin that slides out is going to uh, foul on the battery box. Trust me, the first time I did this, it was an absolute pain. Um, but there is a fairly easy way to do it. I'm going to show you the rough and ready way, but you are by all means welcome to completely remove the battery box if you prefer. Remove the battery, that's fairly straightforward. So as you can see, the pin fouls on the bottom of the battery box which is incredibly frustrating. So the way I get around this is I lever the bottom of the battery box out of the way. It's a um, fairly rigid plastic, but you can um, bend it up out of the way using something like a screwdriver. Um, you don't have to do this. If you're very, very precious about your bike, uh, by all means, go ahead and totally remove the battery box. It'll just take a little bit longer, um, but this is the method that I use. So I've used a long Allen key there. Um, it could be a screwdriver uh, and I've just put it behind, braced it behind the frame and um, just slightly bent the bottom of the battery box out of the way. And that's enough to get the pin out. Once the pin's out of the way, you can easily take the uh, footrest off. Once the footrest's off, it's time to install the bracket. Now, you can use the same method of levering the battery box out of the way as you did before, or you could actually put this bolt in upside down and put the, um, uh, the, the nut on the top if you wanted to. Reinstall the battery. Tighten the connections and put the retaining bracket back in. 
Install the cover back in place. Again, loosely connect the rack to the hanger. Add the washer to the bolt. Put it through the hanger. Add the spacer. Put the bolt in the lower bracket and tighten. Tighten the top bolts. And that's it. So you can reinstall the seat, which you're going to have to remove the, uh, the side bolts uh, enough to drop the seat in, um, push that bolt through and tighten. That's it. It's uh, fairly straightforward. So I would give yourself maybe, if you're kind of really going at it, maybe 10 to 20 minutes. If you want to take your time, half an hour. It's not a difficult job at all. Uh, I'm not a mechanic and I can do it. Again, just take your time around the battery. This next little clip, I just want to show you how you access your toolbox if you're still using that. So you're going to remove the, uh, the bolt uh, that goes through to the seat and it just levers out of the way. And then you can get your key in, open the toolbox, get your tools out, whatever you need. Um, so obviously it does require you to re remove the luggage if you have luggage on your bike. So the rear rack, it's uh, very straightforward. It's designed to work seamlessly with the side racks or you can use it on its own. Um, it's really designed for uh, putting roll top luggage on. You could put a rotor packs container on there with some liquid. We definitely don't recommend you put anything too heavy like a big top box or anything that's going to um, transfer a lot of the weight uh, and leverage forces further back on the bike. So the rack comes in parts. You've got your top plate and your side plates and all the associated nuts and bolts and washers. Um, the important thing here is that you pre-assemble it uh, very, very loosely. Uh, keep it very, very finger tight. So you're going to put those side plates onto the top plate um, in a very, very loose uh, manner. It's literally, it'll rattle when you pick it up. And the important thing there is that you tighten everything at the end once it's all in the position that it wants to be in. If you tighten everything too much to start off with, the chances are things aren't going to quite align and you're going to be forcing stuff. So this is me having pre-assembled it and I'm just putting it in place to figure out where everything's going to go. Remove the bolts that are just behind the indicators. You're going to want to loosen the seat bolts. So here I'm slotting the uh, rear rack in and uh, loosely installing it on those seat bolts. So I'm aligning the spacer that comes with the kit and folding the rack down just so everything's neat and in the right place. And then I'm installing the bolt through the rack and the spacer into the frame and tighten it. So the last step here is tightening all of those nuts and bolts at the end. Um, really important to do that at the end and not earlier on. You know at this point that everything is just sitting comfortably where it wants to be. The tail tidy is really designed to remove the need of the, for the big um, chunky plastic OEM um, tail end. Our tail tidy is made of stainless steel, powder coated black. Um, it's a neat, elegant solution to the back of the bike. And the important thing to note is that it retains all the OEM fixings. So the OEM uh, brake light, the number plate light, uh, and the side reflectors are all retained from the um, original bike. Remove the number plate if it's fitted. Remove the side reflectors. For this bit, I've taken the top luggage rack off that I'd installed and I've taken the seat off. And once those two things are off, I can remove the, uh, the panel uh, at the top of the bike that then gives me access to the wiring. There's a very simple plug and play here to disconnect. Once that's disconnected, you can remove the hanger. Undo a couple of screws and you can open the hanger. You might want to do this on a workbench and not on the rear wheel, um, but yep, yeah, remove the uh, OEM light. Going to remove the reflector. Uh, 
I'm just dry fitting the uh, new adventure spec tail tidy to make sure everything's going in the right place. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to reinstall the number plate light to the tail tidy. So I'm threading the uh, cable through and using the OEM bolts. I'm tightening those nuts and bolts. Install the reflector, it's pretty straightforward. I'm installing the light cover that protects the number plate light. Putting the OEM reflectors back on. The kit comes with some cable ties to keep that cable neat out of the way. So once that's done, it's time to put the tail tidy back on the bike. So I'm just making sure that the cable feeds through and then I'm putting the bolts back in place and tightening them. Put your number plate back on. Make sure you reconnect the plug and play plug. Put the top panel back on. Put your rear rack back on if you've got one. And that's it, it's pretty straightforward. Just take your time. Um, I'm just gonna show you this last little clip to kind of show you what I did wrong first time and hopefully you can avoid this. So I was being lazy really, and I didn't take the top panel off and expose the plug and play part of the cable. So when I was trying to take this off for the first time, that was the point I realized that uh, I needed to take the rack off and take the top cable off and do it properly. Or else I guess I could have done it by kind of cutting through the plastic, but I didn't really want to do that. So yeah, um, if you want to do it properly, take your rear rack off the top, take the panel off and just get it unplugged. So the bash skid plate, depending on where you are in the world and what you call it, it's really easy to put on. You kind of don't need to watch this video, uh, but I'm going to show you anyway. Um, it's a five minute job. Fit the foam uh, that comes with the skid plate. Offer up to the frame and make sure everything aligns. Loosely install the bolts in the front and the rear of the skid plate. Once you're happy that everything's aligned and there's no stresses, tighten it. So our skid plate has got a hole cut out, so when it's time to come do your oil change, you can really easily um, access your um, sump bolt at the bottom of your engine um, without actually having to remove the skid plate. The CRF 300L mini fairing. So we have a few options here. We've got a universal mini fairing which attaches to handlebars. We have a CRF 250L mini fairing and a dedicated CRF 300L mini fairing. Um, a little bit of info about these. Um, the universal mini fairing fits on, say, my KTM, um, KTM EXC or 690 or something like that. Um, and that's because uh, those bikes have got fat bars or you can have a 28 mil or a 22 mil version. But the important thing there is that they don't have a cross brace. If you've got a cross brace, the, mini fair the universal mini fairing isn't going to work. So straight out of the box, the CRF 250 and 300L has a cross brace. So we've got these... Um, uh, dedicated mounts to put the mini fairing onto the bike. They mount onto the top triple clamp. The reason why we have different ones for those two models is that there's, there's the position of the Speedo is slightly different for those two bikes. Um, and while the 250L mini fairing does fit on the 300L, uh, we were getting some comments that it was um, blocking too much of the Speedo. So we uh, decided to get a dedicated 300L one made. Remove the top triple clamp bolts. Remove the cable guide on the left hand side. 
Remove the top triple clamp bolts on the other side. Install the mini fairing. Reinstall the top triple clamp bolts. Once they're in place, tighten them. Reinstall the cable guide. And that's it, you're ready to go. It's super, super easy. Um, you may want to check your handbook if you've got one and find out what the torque settings are for your bike and make sure that those triple clamps are torqued back up to their proper spec. So the CRF 300L radiator brace. This is a very simple brace that's designed to go on the radiator. This bike has only got one radiator on the right hand side. Um, and this is designed to prevent crush damage uh, from when the bike leans over. It's not designed to protect the front of the uh, radiator. Um, it only protects from uh, forces to the side of the bike. So there's a couple of ways to install this. The kit comes with uh, uh, two side plates and a number of aluminium rods that connect those um, and bolts that go into those. Um, now, if you want to be very thorough and robust, you can remove your radiator um, to install this. That will require that you drain the system, remove it. You can take it off the bike, put it on your um, workbench, install the brace around it, and then put it back on the bike and refill the system. Um, if you're quite competent and confident doing that, by all means do that. Um, the method I'm gonna show you here is uh, another way of doing this that doesn't require you to actually remove the radiator from the bike if you are not confident doing that. Remove the side panel. Remove the bolts holding the radiator to the frame. Take the correct side plate and place it behind the radiator. Put the bolts in place and thread the rods onto those bolts. So threading those bolts on can be a little bit tricky, so just take your time. Um, in the first instance, you do it finger tight, and then you want, you've got to uh, tighten those up, obviously. So you've got to make sure you've got the right tools to be able to get behind that. Um, I find that quite a narrow, small little um, Allen key is good enough to just nip behind, hold the bolt in place, and uh, uh, tighten up the rod onto that bolt. Once that part of the brace is in place, I'm installing the OEM bolts to reconnect the radiator to the frame. Tighten those. Insert the final side plate. Uh, everything should line up. Use the bolts to connect the side plate to the threaded rods and then tighten. Reinstall the OEM plastic guard. Reinstall the side panel. So it's fairly straightforward. You can do it without removing the radiator. Uh, just take your time and you'll be absolutely fine. Okay, so there you go. Uh, everything was straightforward. So I think the kit really kind of complements this bike. Um, our bike has got 97 miles on it. Um, I'm really pushing to get up to the first service. I just need time. I'm off on a little trip up to Scotland tomorrow, so maybe we'll hit 600 miles by the time Monday comes around. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. Um, if you're a pro mechanic and there's another way of doing what I've done, feel free to leave your thoughts there as well. Um, I didn't use Loctite, you can use Loctite. I didn't because I need to take the stuff off the bike and put it back on a couple of times. Um, yeah, uh, I'd love to see what you've done with your CRF 250Ls, 300Ls even. 
Um, so do send some stuff through if you've got any pictures through our website. Um, and if you've got a 250L, we've got exactly the same kit for that bike. Just go to our website and have a search. Thank you for your time. If you want more from me, subscribe uh, here in YouTube. And I also have an email newsletter that goes out once a week, which you can find on our website. Um, yeah, happy riding, enjoy your bike. See you soon.